Hi, welcome to the first Spark Expert Chat of 2023. I'm Rachel Marks, the Rezo Spark Network Executive Director. I am a middle-aged white woman with chin-length fading purple hair. I'm wearing purple's cat's eye glasses with sparkles in the corner, a dark pink long sleeve dress. My pronouns are she and her, and this is my sign name. Today we are meeting together from different parts of the province via technology that is steeped in the colonial mindset and that continues to marginalize and exclude many of our Indigenous communities. Communities who may not have access to reliable internet infrastructure or the technology needed to access the internet. I invite you all to take a moment to think about the privilege we're experiencing right now in order to take part in this chat and to consider ways in which we can make the changes to ensure digital equity for all Canadians. Let me share with you a little bit about our wonderful guests this evening. Gordon Duff and Chris Lind. Gordon has been a friend to Spark for many years, since the 2014 symposium, in fact, where he was part of a presentation on implementing a municipal cultural plan. That's something we should probably revisit. And he has attended every Spark gathering since then and was even co-host of a regional mini symposium in October, 2018. Gordon has says he has met the most fascinating people through Spark and has been so impressed by their talents and passion. Locally, he's a founding member of the Minto Arts Council and has been involved with event planning both independently, with Culture Days, and with Spark. Gordon is an active member of the Spark Board of Directors and is here this evening to chat with us about Spark communities. Welcome, Gordon. Thank you, Rachel. Good to see you. And of course, Chris and Harold again, too. Great. And, uh, yeah, so. Awesome. Talking. Me too. Thanks for being here tonight. Uh, our next guest this evening is Chris Lind. Not only is Chris a visual artist and an amazing one at that, but she is also an active arts community member in her home community of Halliburton. She sits on many committees, including the Arts Council Halliburton Highlands and is the past chair of SPARC. Chris is a founding member of SPARC and a tireless advocate for rural and remote arts and the people who make and love them. Chris has attended every single SPARC symposium and I think every single SPARC meeting, uh, run most of the SPARC community consultations and has helped steer SPARC towards our current goals and continues to inspire us to grow, move forward and find new ways to support you, our members. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Rachel. Happy to be here. Yeah. Share what I know. Thank you so much. We also have a special guest joining us as uh, an interested mind, someone who wants to know more about tonight's hot topic, which are spark communities or spark hubs. We've got a difference of opinion on the name, but we all love it, the idea. And that's Harold Hess. Harold is a former steering committee member of Spark, has attended I think every symposium except the 2022, uh, is a tireless volunteer in his community, helps out with the youth opportunities in the arts in Brockville, who were one of our rural and remote arts visibility campaign micro grant recipients, as well as is involved with the uh, Brockville, oh, I'm gonna get it wrong, Operatic Society. Thank you, Harold, for joining us. Okay, let's start things off. Gordon, what drew you to Spark? Um, thanks, Rachel. Well, as you mentioned, I was asked uh, by one of your, your predecessors at an event that we held in Minto called the Creative Rural Communities in 2013. And uh, we talked about just having completed our cultural plan and uh, they were interested to see how you could turn these documents into actual action and, and what we did. So again, um, went to the first one in Halliburton and uh, like many of us in this part, we, I've just kind of driven through Halliburton and, and just found it to be such an interesting community. Um, the setting was at the Sir Sanford Fleming School for the Arts, which was really unique. And uh, I, I think the school term was just ending so it gave a real good uh, atmosphere and flavor and uh, yeah at that time there were so many people from well all across Ontario but there were some from other provinces too and uh, 
really interesting and engaged. And uh, it was a, a fairly long seminar, but the time just flew. And uh, they had so many different ways of integrating uh, things like uh, a little mini play or a music thing. And it was so much more interesting than uh, many of the, the conferences that I've been to. So um, they were looking to see how do we move forward and put out a call for a, a little uh, strategy session or working group in November and back in Halliburton. And I think there were about 30 of us. And at that time, I think I signed up for the outreach committee and uh, <laughs> just kind of moved on from then. I, I probably Chris remembers all about that too. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, awesome. That's Thank you so much. Okay, let's uh I'm gonna keep the spotlight on you for a moment, Gordon. Um so right off the bat, we're talking tonight about Spark Communities. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about your Spark Community journey and what sure. sparked it all for you? Oh, well, well, one of the Sparks is here. <laughs> Chris and Michael were doing, uh, I guess, I don't know if they called them community consultations at the time, but we did do that. And uh, the idea was to try and see if Minto could be like, not as um, versatile as Halliburton, but at least we were a community that back, you look over a hundred years ago, there was always a bit of emphasis on arts and culture, even though it was a farming community and an industrial community. So uh, we have like a, a local theater guild, the dance academy and uh, kind of horticultural societies and, and all that kind of stuff. And we were, one of the first rural arts councils. We've been going since 1996. Um, so, so that it was kind of a, a natural fit. And uh, so we had a, a very successful one and then everybody, this was again, pre-COVID and people were talking about how do we drive our audiences? And that's become from a, a big priority to like the priority now. Um, and then we held a mini symposium uh, in uh, October of uh, 18, which was kind of on the off year. And uh, again, we had six different speakers. So this was just a one day thing. Um, and our current president, Sandy Irvin, was one of the remote ones. Everyone else came in person and uh, held at the luxurious Harrison Arena. <laughs> and anyway, um, that went forward. And uh, I think we also got the uh, Com Community Collaborative Initiative, kind of a, a grant to, to host that one too. And it went well. And then as you say, I've seen all the, see the 2016 symposium and the 28 one in Cobalt. And we were trying to keep the, uh, the momentum going and boom, <laughs> um, well, the Trillium uh, organization came out with uh, seed grants and uh, we were thinking that this would be a good thing to try and promote. I believe the executive group of Spark at the time had decided to uh, go back and try this whole community, hub community, uh, Spark community again. And, uh, we kind of volunteered and said, well, we'll do a collaborative um, with Spark, our local theater guild, the town of Minto Culture Roundtable, and the Minto Arts Council took the lead. Um, we were a registered charity. And I think one of the last um, pre-COVID uh, things, I think in maybe February of 20, um, Trillium held a uh, in-person seminar and how to be successful in these applications and <laughs> we all work together and we were um, however at the time the idea was to do workshops in the spring of 21 and end in September <laughs> of 21 and you know what happened <laughs> so yeah um, yeah and uh, anyway so we we did that and I, I know you probably have other questions, but that's how we kind of got to doing the 
the community home to them. Great. Um, and, you know, it sounds like you wanted to keep, you said you wanted to keep the momentum going. So what, what is it um, really that, uh, that, that made you say like, I want to join this partnership and I want to, we want to apply for this grant together. Oh, I think we thought it was a way that we could help spark, uh, have a success story of having an active community and help ourselves too, either through publicity, gaining resources and, uh, and capacity building being the buzzword. <laughs> um, and, uh, Again, Spark Group is very heavy into community theater, and that seems to be the primary um, cultural institutes around here, too. So we knew we wanted to put on a workshop that would focus on uh, community theater, and uh, we also wanted uh, uh, like diversity and inclusion, and you know, like Rachel's a leader in that. So we wanted to focus on that. And then by uh, coincidence, um, I found out through researching this, that Modus O Dance Theater, who I met through Spark, um, the principals had actually moved 15 minutes away from my house. So even though they're winding down, we wanted to engage them and we had hoped to kind of attract um, dance communities in the area too. So that was our original one. And then, um, as things got delayed, and, and here we are on, on Let's Talk Day, I know Rachel and I had a conversation and said, I, I think we need to address wellness and we need to have a little bit of fun. So that's how we ended up with this uh, wellness and the arts theme. So those were the four themes on the four different um, dates that we had in the spring of 22. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit late. So how yeah. is How's the experience being a Spark community? How has that been for you so far? Um, I think it's been good. I, I think, again, I'm on a few different uh, associations in that, and some have risen to the challenges of COVID, and, and some have been, I don't know, um, paralyzed by it, I, I think, too. And I think Spark has, has tried its best through these innovative things like you sparks of hope and your regional accessibility. Um, again, I think the Creative Cities Network has done a good job of their, their calls and uh, culture days. Um, some other larger institutions, I think just, um, I know rural, at least the part of rural Ontario that I'm in, it's not a digital community. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, like I, I run the local film fest. I know you have a, a very active one in Halliburton. I tried going digital, I'd get three or four people. It just was not worth it. And I, I know like Barry and, and perhaps Halliburton at work. So again, it went, I tried, but trying to be a, an independent film <laughs> distributor, it's tough. You, you need that intermediary. And so we're trying to come back with that too. So I, I think, um, you know, and one of our other board members, Eric Gowdy is just down the road and he's a, an actual theater manager as his job. And uh, he's really bounced back with a really full schedule in late 22 and 23. But like he was kind of shuttered too. And he's trying to work on that uh, Canadian presenters network too. So yeah, we really had to be creative and uh, whatever, two, two minds better than one, right? So it's true, it's true. Better. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Uh, okay. I'm gonna put you in the hot seat, hot seat now. Mm -hmm. So from the Spark perspective, um, you put out a call for Spark communities, but what was involved with helping Minto become a Spark community? Um, well, we um, we knew right. We knew all along that when we had decided to um, the idea of Spark communities or Spark hubs. I'm I'm one of the people that like the words hubs. Spark hubs. That term it it was like an original idea from um, the year 2012 when we first started talking about Spark is to be able to create around the province um, 
these hubs or communities in rural remote Ontario that um, were connected to Spark through um, various ways. And, and um, uh, Gordon has touched on some of those. And I think in, as we get down to further questions, we also will talk about that. So, so Minto rose to the top. <laughs> Gordon and his um, and his um, cohort Peggy, his friend Peggy, who also is right there um, with the Mental Arts Council. That's how, um, uh, or that's who we worked through. We've done a lot of work through the the Mental Arts Council. And um, but when Gordon came to the first Spark Symposium and presented, there was just a buzz about his workshop. And um, every and I didn't get to go to it. You know, one of those things where you just can't go to everything. And I didn't. And it was, you know, there was somewhere in there the word municipal, and I thought, oh, I'm not going to that. I'm going to everything that's artsy. So um, anything Harold Hess does, I go to. But when it said um, when it said um, municipal, I thought, ah. And then and yet it was just people loved his workshop because they talked about. Um, what they talked about was the arts in, in a municipality and um, how important it was. So anyway, right along the way, we knew that we wanted, um, we knew we wanted Minto as one of our first Spark um, communities. And so there was a lot of, we, did, we didn't know how to make it happen. And then we um, talked to OTF and um, our, our, our counselor there. And she told us about a collaboration grant. So we looked at the seed grant, which is um, is about the beginnings, the beginnings of a new program, a new initiative in your in your community. And so um, we uh, and when we realized that there was a collaboration portion to it, then we thought, well, this is fabulous because together we can apply for um, uh, for a grant and it will and it allows us to create a, um, a spark hub. Um, what we what we'd always been thinking about. And it would be this group, this um, from a rural remote community in Ontario, who um, had um, was active in the performing arts, and they have lots of other um, disciplines of the arts happening there too, which is lovely to be able to tap into. So um, we just started to work on the grant, and we started talking back and forth and sharing ideas and and what kinds of you know what what kind of projects the um, Gordon would like to do and who partners within his community could be. So there was a lot of conversation back and forth. We learned a lot about each other. Um, Gordon already knew a lot about us, and but we learned more about his community. And as you said, Michael and I had been there to do a community consultation. So we were really fortunate to, to meet a lot of the people in the organization. So we sort of, we knew some of that information, but we had a chance through this writing of this grant to go more in depth into who he might tap into and who he's trying to reach, that sort of thing, and how Spark could be as of assistance. And then in the end, when it was all, when all of it happened, how how Minto could then, you know, could add to the um uh the collectiveness of Spark. And so um, we met a lot of people, um, new people down in that area, which was great, is great for Spark. And I know that some that Rachel, you have made connections with those people through our organizations. They've been on expert chats or blogs, or you know, we've been able to reach out to them when we have big questions. And so that's that's what happens when you develop these hubs. You start to you make you make these connections that you never had before. You meet wonderfully creative people, problem solvers, people who never give up. <laughs> and who just want to see who who want to contribute to the vibrancy of their community and that's gordon and that's peggy in minto and that's what they're doing and have been working on and just never seem to tire of it that's amazing thanks chris you know um, one of the things that sort of drew me in at the beginning when we talked about hubs and i i use the analogy of seeing us as a wheel an old-fashioned wagon wheel where sort of the board and and jason and i are in the middle and and we send information out to hubs and hubs send it back to us and they send it mm -hmm. to each other and we're all connected to each other and mm -hmm. you know um, my dream in the future is that we we are able to hire a local person in each of those hubs some point in the future to to help 
organize and and uh, and um, advocate for funding in the arts and yeah. uh, <laughs> and draw people yeah. in together. Right, bring the right people together. You know, um, that's I think that's what um, Harold and I have, and, and Gordon. Gordon sits on the board too. So the three of us. I mean, we've met so many people over the last uh, few years. That now if someone says something to us, we can say, oh, you should talk to so-and-so or you know what, the town, this town in Northern Ontario had that very same problem. And so we could connect you and let you, you know, you could talk to each other. So it's, it's very exciting. <laughs> yeah. And I, I love that there's a connection, but also, you know, like. Gordon provided hands-on workshops and, and mm -hmm. training for people in his community. So not only was he connecting people in the community and then able to connect them to people outside of the community by bringing in different lead artists, but, you know, he, he provided um, training and professional yeah. development for people. So Gordon, you had a really diverse set of, of workshops. Mm -hmm. Like what? Sure. I'll, I'll go into them a bit. I just want to show you uh, Chris mentioned the collaborative agreement. Here it is, <laughs> like a three-page document, and you had to do that. Remember, you had to get it signed by all the groups and that, and the application of like twelve pages. Uh, so it, it was a little bit longer. And again, we did that in twenty-one, so that was different. So um, we had four workshops. Uh, as I said, we started them in April to kind of get away from all the winter traveling problems or issues. Um, and we uh, actually partnered with Drayton Entertainment, which is a big regional professional theater group. Um, kind of, they, they were in Toronto for a very little while, but they're mostly down um, Cambridge, Lake Erie, uh, up in Panatang. And of course, they started in the, the little village of Drayton about 20 minutes away. So uh, we did talk with their. Uh, executive director, Alex Mostakis, and he sent um, his production manager, um, Jeff Johnson College, and we held it in our local Harrison Town Hall Theater. So they were putting on a play, I think the next month, and so the sets were there, so we could actually see it and all that too. And uh, I remember there were two of us who were non-theater people, but I thought it was a fascinating talk because he's basically in the project management logistics. Uh, he had like Gantt charts, Excel sheets. Uh, basically, he took the thing, you'd work from opening light and you just work backwards and you have, you know, dress rehearsal and then getting the cast and sets and going right back. And uh, fascinating. And because Drayton will put on, I don't know, maybe 20 plays, but they won't put a play on like just once in Drayton, they'll put it on in Drayton. Then they'll pack it up on trucks and move it to Grand Bend. So again, sometimes with a two day turnaround. Um, so it was really fascinating to see all the logistics. And it was almost like an HR thing, like you've got the stage manager and they're here to do this and the director is to do this and that. And people are supposed to do their jobs no more or no less. So that's true for many organizations, whether in the arts or, or whatever. So th that was really interesting. And then we had our own uh, Michael Clipperton, who has tons of drama experience, both teaching, writing plays, producing that too. So he could tell many stories and he was in uh, kind of a, amongst his peers that day too. So that was wonderful too. <clears throat> Then in uh, mid-May, we did Wellness in the Arts. Um, Samantha Marcionda, who I'd met digitally through the Sparks of Hope campaign. And uh, she came all the way from uh, St. Catharines, Niagara area. And then a local person, Crystal Lay, um, from Palmerston Listowel, who is kind of a, an energy healer. And coincidentally, also a friend of mine, Brenda Manderson, who is a talented musician and also an energy healer. And uh, we had a fascinating day. Kind of people, again, <clears throat> coincidentally, here we are in Let's Talk Day, talking about their mental health struggles or addiction issues or whatever and how they overcame them. 
and they're all like successful people. Most of them running their own businesses now. Um, and we finished with the choir, 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 which is Rachel's idea. <laughs> and you can be there. And that was in uh, Moorfield, which is a little hamlet again near here. So we tried to move it around a bit. Um, and then we had a, a welcoming everyone. So we broadly defined inclusivity. Um, we started off with uh, an indigenous artist facilitator. And it was literally a, an on your feet interactive where you actually got the whole audience there on, on a stage. And it was at the uh, Fergus Grand Theater. So Eric was our, uh, our AV person at the last minute too. So that was interesting. We also had a uh, youth worker, um, the uh, CMHA, the Waterloo Wellington Division has set up seven local hubs for youth. Um, not just for mental health, it could be just a place to hang out or to help with your resume or play games or whatever, um, to safe spaces. And she talked about how it was created. Um, we had a, a really fascinating talk from the Canadian Council of Muslims. And uh, the main people were from Markham Richmond Hill area. And they came all the way up to um, Fergus for that. And uh, yeah, I think everybody really enjoyed meeting uh, Aseya and her mother <laughs> there too. And we topped the day off with our own Rachel, who uh, did a really good kind of a practical venue guide going right from having a person arrive at the theater. Can they drive up? What are the lights like? Are they distracting? Can you get in the door? Of course, the washrooms, can you? buy a ticket, you know, to, uh, make your way around, and uh, can you find seating? And it's all without standing out, too. It's all just coming in as part of the rest of the audience, too. So uh, I, I believe you even produced a, a takeaway guide a bit later for the, the theater. And uh, yeah, and something that's really useful for any venue, I think, too. Yeah. I'm going to say they did all the work. I just, uh, oh, I just yeah. over and gave advice. I don't want to take anyone's, they did a great job. Oh, Check yeah. out this grand venue guide. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that was great, too. And then uh, we had the, the Modus O, and we actually had it at their theater facility, which is uh, a former horse barn, or can be used as a horse barn still. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, they had uh, a lot of interesting local people. The, the three of them, the three principals are all fascinating uh, in their own right. You know, James being a, a sheep shearer and, and Jack being a, an acrobat and, and Cynthia, I think that is the creative one too. So uh, yeah, we really enjoyed that one too. And uh, kind of wish I had known they were here a few years ago <laughs> too. And so they, and, and then we did like feedback surveys too. So that was very interesting. The modus so focused on networking and cross promotion. Is that correct? Like how to work. Yes. Yeah. In fact, um, I think I was able to bring about 10 friends to one of their next uh, productions. They did uh, Carmina Burana, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, they were you know, a joy to work with. Um, yeah, so it's great. And one of our, our former members, uh, Stephanie, is friends with them from way back, and she yes. came all the way up too. So, yeah, definitely. Um, great, thank you. Um, let's get back to this grant. We keep sort of talking about this sure. grant. So, that's Ontario Trillium Foundation. Um, yeah. And at the time, you applied for the seed grant. Now, I'm just going to say this for everybody who's going to be watching this later. The seed grant is due February 1st. That's next week. So um, if we want to get rocking on this, we, we, we really got to hit that pavement running. So let's talk a little bit. Is it, you know, some grants are easier than others to fill out. What's this like? What, what, what's involved in filling uh, out? I would, I would say this is definitely in the top third of difficulty uh, to do. Um, 
Well, again, ours was, as we said, a collaborative. Yeah. So yeah. collaborative, but Minto Arts Council had to take the lead. So agree to, you know, um, take control of the finances, pay all the bills, get all the reports done on time. Our rep was really good to work with because, as I say, we were supposed to have this done in September of 21. And, you know, and I, well, like Spark, you know, we tried to postpone, right? Like, oh, just give us a few more months. This pandemic will be done. And uh, they all, oh, that sounds good. Yeah. And in fact, they, like, it's kind of sad because it's tough to get uh, approved. They had grants that they had approved. And then it was like the, the groups would say, oh, I'm sorry, we can't do it. And I talked to the fellow. He says, well, we looked at yours and it looked like you still intended to go forward. And I said, yep. And we said right out front, this will not work in a digital format. So let's wait till we can have in person again and follow whatever health protocols we're in. And uh, yeah, we were great to do that. So you have to have, um, I think a, a year or two of financial statements. That's one of the requirements. Uh, you must have uh, a board of directors in that too. Um, a lead person. Um, again, um, have evidence of some kind of governance or that. So, so they look into some of these boilerplate, and of course, like many grants, you have to be open and, and inclusive, um, and uh, and have that all signed and agree on the terms. You have to kind of pick uh, a target market, and and again, our target market was the, the rural and remote communities. Um, and we defined that as 20,000 or less. Um, and uh, as far as age group, we're looking at all age groups, youth theater, <laughs> no age changes. Um, we, we want anyone. And you have to be able to do metrics. That's one of the reasons that we did the follow up survey. And you have to say, here's where we were, this is what we did, and here's where we are afterwards. Um, and I'll just like, what is your project? We said run a series of workshops, building skills and capacity for community groups and bring in experts. Uh, why is now um, art scenes are vital to communities, but difficult to maintain in a, a rural setting. And uh, the rural Ontario, uh, I think was even then doing a bit of a renaissance too, and how to integrate the, the newcomers. And we said that we would help strengthen skills and connections, in the magic word, of the performers, creators, and presenters, um, greater access to culture. Again, Minto, and uh, yeah, and I, I want to go back to our, our 22 symposium, where the municipal thing really came up a lot. I think you even had a counselor, and so many are sort of like, oh, Municipal cows is terrible. The staff, even worse, you know? <laughs> so it was like, no, we're trying to prove that um, even from an economic development lens, uh, you need the health care, you need the child care, you need uh, the infrastructure, and you need a quality of life. And we figure that's where the whole spark connection comes in. Um, you know, again, people primarily from the urban areas have come to our community in the last two years. And they're made, oh, there's an outlet of the film circuit. Oh, there's a dance group and a theater group, uh, an art gallery, like we've got a, a fantastic show on right now. So uh, yeah, and, and you have to, you know, illustrate all that. Um, so something you said, you were talking about boards and, and if you, I was just having a little nose around the website today. And when you go on the grant, um, there's all of these click downs. So it'll tell you what they mean by mm -hmm. a, 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 an OTF approved board. They'll tell you what they mean. So they really do give you the information right yeah. off the bat to figure out whether or not your organization is eligible. Um, 
Um, so I think that's good. Um, they do talk about collaborations. There's a, a great um, subheading. So you have to pick one of the results that you want to see. And the mm -hmm. one that I think really works for what we want to do with Spark, with hubs slash communities, um, is inspired people. Yeah. Uh, the arts and culture in a community. So if I were applying, that would be, I think, the the subheading that anything that would be Spark Hub or community related would currently fit under. I mean, these grants change all the time, but currently that's what they're what they look like. Now, Chris, uh -huh. what would you say to anyone who's thinking about becoming a Spark community? Um, I, I would. I would say, first of all, just, you know, on the grant, I agree that OTF is one of the um, sets mm -hmm. a lot of criteria. Um, some of the parameters are, you know, are, are interesting to delve into it. You really need to know what it is that you want to do, what you want to accomplish, what your end results are going to be. Like you need to be able to articulate those in like right up front. Um, I've been involved in one very large um, OTF grant, and then this, um, the one that we did with um, Minto and with Niagara. And, um, and so both of them, it didn't matter how much money you're asking for, you needed, it's so important to know what it is that you want. And it's really important to run that by the, the um, I'm calling them counselors, I don't know that that's even the right term but the people there's a person that will be assigned to you and you and before um in the next four days you get to pick up the phone and talk to that person and run your ideas by them and they give you lots of opportunity the other thing that i would like people to know is if they do apply to for an otf grants once you get that grant then there is so much help for you it is um it's really was it was really wonderful for me um the first one i I was the phone contact for the very first one and that we did. And um, the person that I worked with was so helpful in um, helping us work around. I mean, cause we did have some, diff we had some problems. We had some glitches along the way. And so the best thing to do is, you know, not to stick your head in the sand and hope it goes away and hope nobody notices. It's better just to pick up the phone and say, oh my gosh, you know, we, you know, this is ah, you know, and what do we do? And so I found all along the way in both of the grants that that's what. So not to be fearful, even though we're saying they are difficult, um, they're some of the harder ones that uh, you know one of the harder ones, um, o more onerous in the application form. So, but don't don't shy away from it because it's worth it in the end to yeah. do that. And I think the other is scale your request to the project and to the capabilities of your organization. So this wasn't like in the overall scheme of things, like I'll say it, it was 28,500, which is maybe a lot of money to our little groups, but it's not a lot compared to some of the, the large arts grants and that too. But it's something that related to the actual costs of, of doing this work and that too. So don't don't ask for too little but don't ask for too much either <laughs> so okay um so rachel your question to me was um uh, is um uh could you tell me that again i think it's about why would people think about joining spark or yeah, but becoming what, would a hub? You, what would you say to someone who's like like harold who's like maybe maybe our community could benefit from being a a, a spark hub what would you say right. um I, I would say that um, being a person myself who lives in what we consider a rural um, community, we're not remote, but we're a rural community, that um, sometimes we feel isolated. Um, the reason, if I can just do a little bit on the history, um, the reason that Halliburton was um, the source, the beginning of the, the idea of Spark was because um, people in my community, we, we, we had a dance group and we had, we had music happening and we had theater in our high school and, and we had storytelling and we had a, um, a private radio station starting up that was promoting all of this stuff. And, and so, but we, we noticed that we were clashing with each other and we, you know, we were running into each other's dates and, and, or we would see that, you know, that, that the theater group had a full house, but but this group only had half a, half as many people come and 
And so a couple of people decided, said, you know, let's get together and just talk about what you do. I mean, we're all leaders in the arts in our community, so let's sit around a table. So we did. And before long, we were sort of at our seventh or eighth or ninth or tenth meeting. It was just so compelling to come back together to share our challenges and share our successes. And so um, we called ourselves the Performing Arts Roundtable. And we solved problems like transportation. And we, talk, we talked about, we created a, a, a community calendar amongst ourselves. And so as soon as you knew what you were going to be doing, then you put it on the calendar. And so other people would say, well, I'm going to make sure I don't do anything on that date. Or else you said, oh, I am going to do something on that date because we could work together. We um, started to promote together. So we would do um, some advertising at the same time. So anyway, that's what that was our Performing Arts Roundtable. And our, um, our friend, David Bernard from um, Canadian Heritage would come to our meetings periodically um, because we were getting some of the, some of us not, were getting small grants from Canadian Heritage. And so, um, so that's how David was associated with us. And so he, um, he is an officer who is, um, uh, involved around the province of Ontario, he was looking at other small rural, small communities who were struggling. And he said, everybody needs a performing arts roundtable of sorts. And so um, he really encouraged us to form a, to form an organization, try to get some money, bring some people together, have a symposium and talk about what are you doing in rural remote communities? What are your successes? What are your challenges? Um, what have you got to share with people? And um, so that was our first symposium and it was really, really successful. And so we've just grown from there. And so I would say to people, first of all, I would say become a member of Spark and follow Rachel on Facebook and Instagram and find out and read her newsletters and find out more as much as you can about Spark. Because if you live in a rural and remote community, I'm pretty sure that you are having some challenges and that um, you know you could benefit from some of the information that's coming out. So I'm going to say about becoming, um, you know, the people that I've met and that I work with in Spark are um, creative people and they don't let things stand in their way. Um, they're creating, they're producing, they're presenting, they're like um, Gordon, you're going to find and like Harold, I know they're animators, they're community animators, they're people who make things happen. They believe in their community. A lot of the people that you will meet in Spark are people that believe in their community. They want it to be um, alive. They want it to be vibrant. They want it to be, they want people to move there and they want people to who live there to stay there and to be engaged. Those are, those are a lot of people that I meet in Spark are like that. Um, these people are so creative. They're presenting in um, uh, small halls, stone quarries, um, front porches, church basements, churches upstairs, the back of trucks. You know, they're just, they, where there's a will, there's a way. That's the kind of people that they are that we have met in the, through the performing arts in small communities. Um, and as a member of, spark or as a spark hub you have access to these people and you have access to them through our online network you may never meet them in person or you may not meet them in person for two years until you come to a symposium but you have access to these people they're thinkers and they're planners and there's and along with them there's a board of directors and these people want you to be successful they want what they really want is they want performing arts to be successful in your community. And they want you, the people that are trying to make it happen, they want to help you. They want to assist you in making that happen in many different ways. And it could be through conversations. It can be through a little bit of money because sometimes we have some funding that we can um, give to people. And um, I just think that um, if you become a Spark Hub, then you have this team of people behind you. It means to become a Spark Hub, you're somewhere along the continuum of uh, 
Hmm. You might have, you, you have a couple, you have a few, a couple of organizations that are already doing some work and you, you know, you just want to grow that base. So becoming a spark hub would be, um, would be good for you because then you have, you have this team of people behind you that can help you with, um, um, producing and presenting and creating. And, uh, you know, we used to wonder, you know, like we'd be doing some Highland summer festivals in Halliburton and we wouldn't have, we didn't have great lighting, but we had a music organization um, in our community who had spent all their money on lights. And then we found out that they were prepared to share those lights and they were, and, and then they had a technician. They had a friend of a friend who was a technician who lived in a community 30 kilometers away and he would come and he was prepared and willing to come and help the theater group talk about and share lighting tips with them. And so that's, you know, that's what Spark can do for you. It can help you with um, how to connect with um, funders. Um, we have people on our board that are excellent at writing grants. And so that kind of, that kind of help is there for you. So um, so as a Spark Hub, you're going to make new connections. You're going to find support for the challenges. You're going to find lots of encouragement. You're going to find a sounding board for your ideas. And you're going to get help when you need it, if you ask. Um, you just, it's, um, and in return, there is a, there is a, in return, um, your community, um, by highlighting the performing arts in your community, um, you're contributing to the growth and development of the performing arts in small communities, whether they're in Southern Ontario, Eastern, Western, or Northern. Um, that's what Spark wants to see happen. We wanna see the performing arts and the associated other disciplines. We're not just about performing arts. We love to bring in the other disciplines into what we're doing. So we don't turn people away because they're not performing artists, but you know, there needs, you know, we like to have some sort of an element in there. But um, you, in return, you're contributing to the vibrancy of all these small communities and collectively you're making, um, you're helping us build um, uh, performing arts in small and uh, small communities around the province of Ontario. And people are starting to look like people like funders and people in municipalities or, you know, um, people in my own municipality, we've worked hard like Gordon has um, to include our counselors in our conversations about what's going on. And we send them tickets and we make sure that they know the kinds of things that are going on. And, and we, we are in their face about the economic development of the arts. And so um, there's just, you know, there's just so much that uh, by being part of Spark that you can gain and that you can give. Thanks, Chris. That was wonderful. Um, and so Spark Hub is, is, is our goal. It, it's, you know, I feel it's the way to keep the pulse of rural and remote arts beating and going. But if you're not there yet, there's also community consultations, right. which could be a first step for you. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's a couple more things to talk about, but I'm just going to ask Harold as someone who we're saying like, hey, want to be a Spark Community Hub. Um, now that you've heard a little bit about the process, and I know you were involved um, on the steering committee when the call went out for Spark Hubs. Um, do you have any questions? No pressure. No. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Um, yeah, great. Yeah, well, uh, I, 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 maybe a comment. Um, I, I want to thank Gord, Gordon and, and Chris. Like, Hearing Gordon's perspective of the nuts and bolts of making it happen is wonderful. It's a bit scary, but it's wonderful. But I mean, we all grow from challenges, right? You know, and our community will grow from the challenges. Chris, uh, your overview, and I mean, I you know, as I was sitting here, I'm going, I bet Rachel will ask me if I have any questions. And so I was, <laughs> I was thinking, well, you know, what's the reality of really getting something off the ground and, and engaging and, and, and what are the steps and basically how do you sell it? Um, certainly, I always believed and became a, a member of SPARC and did some work on the steering committee 
and it was a real pleasure and a real growth for me. But I sometimes felt I was talking when I shared information about Spark. Um, I, I didn't always under, feel maybe that I was totally understood and could and, and was articulating where this could really go with our community or any of our rural communities. Um, it's really about educating and yeah. uh, that's been good. So I, I don't really have a question, but uh, you've certainly I, I would just. I, I would just, uh, yeah, I, to, to that, Harold, I would say um, for people um, that don't know us that well and are looking at their communities and saying, like, we have so much potential here, um, like in lots of communities we go into, there's lots of things happening, but people don't know each other. They don't mm -hmm. know what the other people are doing. And mm -hmm. so that's what a community consultation does for you. So I would say, like, um, you know, a, so people that are thinking about like, oh, yeah, maybe I'd like to be part of this, you know, this, mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to be a hub or not. That sounds like, whoa, that sounds like something I don't know anything about. But, you know, to have a Spark come and do a community consultation, what yeah. happens is, is we bring in all of those groups um, through you, you know, and you know this, Harold, but I'm just sort of for everybody else. We, we come and we say, you know, just invite everybody who's a leader in the arts into a room for a day, even if they'll only come for a half a day. And then we go through a process of making sure everybody introduces themselves. Everybody is clear about what that person over there does and what that person over there does. And then we start talking about all the things that you have in common. We talk about, we have people tell their success stories. This is what I'm doing and this is how great it is, you know, but here's my challenges too. And then we take time to talk about, um, how we could help each other solve these challenges. Mm -hmm. And then, so the community consultations are the place to start. And that really is, um, that, that really is beneficial to communities who want to, um, want to um, ignite um, some action in their communities. Thanks, Chris. That, that kind of reinforces some of my thoughts is we need to yeah, we tried to do some. We we did a converse, uh, a, a consultation a number of years ago, but it needs to be brought back to the forefront again. And there's yeah. different players in our community too, and our community has yeah. changed. So, well, you know, and I think and, there's a there's a there's an interest right now too. That's great. I think so too. I think around the province and and Harold has. I mean, um, Gordon's referred to COVID. Well, COVID shut a lot of people, just stopped a lot of us in our tracks. And people are quite keen now to get back at things. And so community consultations are a great start to bringing your, um, bringing your folks together and igniting some things happening in the community again. Now, um, I'm just, okay, go ahead, Gordon. And then I'm just gonna, gonna, I was just gonna say the Herald. And <laughs> one thing like basically Spark's been around for almost a decade now. And I have found like through the work of the board and Rachel and, and other network coordinators, it's getting easier to communicate because you're, you're getting fewer of the blank, which I realize spark, it's hard to have an elevator pitch and say, this is what we are. But just through working with um, like Creative Cities, Ontario Presents, Culture Days, and so many other organizations that they go, oh, spark, yes, I've heard of that. And I wasn't getting that like in 2014, 18, but I am getting that now. So you might find it's a little easier, you know, like yeah. okay. um, it's yeah. not quite as foreign. So anyway, that that's something to hang on to. Yeah. Quite, Gordon. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon. So I was going to say too, um, and this is an invite to everyone, but Harold, Harold, who's the square underneath my square right now, <laughs> um, we are having our very first ever regional gathering and cabaret. It's a brand new event. It's bigger than a community consultation, smaller than a symposium, and it has a whole performance aspect thrown in. Um, in Almont. So um, we will be running the morning session. It's Saturday, February 25th. The morning will run like a community consultation. Like Chris said, everyone will get up and introduce themselves um, and, and we'll talk about the successes um, and the challenges of creating and sustaining a performing arts ecosystem in that region. Um, so that's an hour out, you know, out of Almont. So that's 
Perth and Smith's Falls and Delta and Brockville and Kemptville and, and everywhere in between, North Augusta. Um, so anywhere in that area, we're coming together in Almont to talk about that. In the afternoon, you'll have an opportunity to pick between two amazing workshops. One of them might be Shadow Puppets. I'm not letting the cat out of the bag there. <laughs> Um, and then in the afternoon, we are having a panel, and it is a how to engage your municipality in the performing arts panel. So we have some amazing people joining us for that panel from different festivals and independent artists um, and um, business, uh, or sorry, arts administrators coming together to, to discuss that topic in the afternoon. Um, lunch is included, the event is free, and it also includes, that's the gathering, it also includes a ticket to the cabaret that night. The cabaret is a performance of 10 regional artists, cross disciplines, so we will have some comedy, we will have drag, we will have music, we will have theater, um, and if you register for the gathering, you get a free ticket to the cabaret. And again, the gathering is also free. Uh, so Almont, uh, Saturday, February 25th. Please join us, go to our website um, or our social media for information on how to register. Now, as I said at the beginning, this was our first uh, expert chat of 2023. Our next expert chat is on Wednesday, the 22nd of February. And it's going to be with Kate Proctor, who wrote the book, Leverage the Arts Ecosystem to Influence Local Prosperity. That is going to be an excellent uh, uh, expert chat. I'm reading the book. It's amazing. Um, Kate has uh, said to, if you'd like to purchase the book directly from her website, it is cheaper than um, purchasing it online through a mega store, which we don't want to do anyway. Um, but it is really great. And it talks a lot about funding and uh, municipalities and, and, and who those key players are in a community and how we get things going. So um, again, it's continuing that conversation and continuing the spark push. So I'd love to thank you all for being here today. We're sorry that we couldn't go live, but this will be posted on our YouTube um, and, and Facebook pages, and we will answer any questions that come up in the comment box. So thanks, Harold, for being our, our observer and can we reel you back in. Um, and thanks to Chris and Gordon for a lovely and lively chat. And I'm going to sign us all off now. Thanks, everyone.